Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode two of Oregon Kluger and Quinn's podcast, Firm Thinking. My name's Nicole Santo. I'm Mike Lombardo. You know, when we first came up with the idea of having a podcast, the idea of a global pandemic obviously was nowhere on our minds, but it's something that's really pervasive in all of our lives now, no more so than in our educational system and, of course, with local sports, which is something that's very important to NEPA. So tell everybody who we have with us today. So we're very excited for our first guest, Dr. Michael Mayen. He is the superintendent at Abington Heights School District. So we're gonna ask him some questions in terms of how coronavirus is impacting the school year there and obviously sports, how it's affecting their sports program. And joining us will be one of our partners, Lars Anderson. Lars practices in municipal law and employment law and he's been consulted over the course of the past few months by employers, by school districts, kind of trying to give them somewhat of a roadmap as to how to deal with coronavirus. So he'll be weighing in with his thoughts as well. It should be interesting. We're very much looking forward to this and we are going to start our Zoom conference with Dr. Mann right now. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Mann. We are so excited for you to be our first live guest. Um, so bear with us, hopefully we can get through this um, without too many flubs, but first, before we get started, we just want you to please briefly introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers. Sure. Well, Nicole, thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Mike Mahan. Uh, it's my privilege to be superintendent of the Abington Heights School District, uh, where I've been for, this is my 17th year now, and uh, you know, before that I had been a superintendent of Wyalusing Area School District and a school administrator and a teacher in a number of different places. So um, you know, that's in a nutshell. I'm a resident of uh, South Abington Township here in the district, and I'm looking very much forward to our conversation today. Dr. Mann, Mike Lombardo, let me, uh, just to give everybody some kind of a window into your, into your background a little bit, you know, the podcast is a little bit of a different medium that we're kind of experimenting. So we, quite, we kind of want to go off the beaten path a little bit. Let's give our listeners a little bit more insight into your background. Now, what part of the state are you originally from? I was born and raised in Scranton, Pennsylvania, as were my mom and dad and my grandparents, so I'm a, a Scranton person from way back. So that's what I was wondering. So as far as the Abington District goes, you're an outsider, but not really an outsider. You're, you're from the area. That's right. I'm an outsider as in I grew up on the other side of the notch. Right. Uh, so, but uh, no, I, I'm very comfortable with Blackwater County. And where did you go to school? Uh, I went to school um, at uh, Nativity of Our Lord Grade School in, in Southside. Uh, I'm a graduate of Scranton Prep. I, uh, I started my career as a science teacher, uh, having gone to the University of Scranton. I followed that up uh, with some time as a principal and assistant principal at a number of places where I also received my certification there at the University of Scranton. Uh, I, I uh, worked hard at Marywood for a PhD and I recently completed an MBA from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And uh, you know, I very much enjoy uh, the work I do in, in a great district right now where I'm privileged to work. That's a great, great background. Now, let me, let me ask you, this is something that I'm interested in. Uh, in, in addition to being a lawyer, I also serve on, on city council in, in Pittston. And a lot of times when I'm out and about, obviously you're, you're running your constituents and they wanna ask you questions and and different issues that might come up. How do you handle that? Does that happen to you when you're out and about, you know, being the superintendent of the school district, that's a pretty prominent position in the community. How do you, does that happen? And if so, how do you handle it? Well, it, it happens all the time and, and it's great, you know, because uh, having lived in this community for, you know, about 20 years and having worked in this job, you're right, a lot of people know you. And uh, first I'll say that people are just very kind. And, uh, you know, I think I've seen, well, people have always been good to me. Uh, people have never been more kind than they have been uh, in recent times as we're working through this, this crisis. And they'll call, how are you doing? Hey, you know, we saw you on the board meeting the other night. How are things? Uh, but it's, it's very much part of the job in being available, not only during the, the school day or business hours, but, you know, if you're picking up something at Garrity's and someone has a question, they come up and ask you, well, right. No, that's part of it. It's very much part of it. And, uh, you know, I, I very much accept that part of the job. And, you know, I'm very grateful to be engaged in uh, discussions with members of our community about something that's very important to them and something that they're very proud of, the Abington Heights School District. Let me ask you, what, kind of along the same lines, one other background question before we get into the nitty gritty. 
we're primarily going to be talking about coronavirus and the effect that that's had on your district. And, and part and parcel of that is, is sports. And obviously, high school sports in NEPA, that's something that people are very passionate about. Um, have you had any negative experiences? Have people, um, you, you know, people get passionate about that issue. Have you had any negative experiences since decisions have been made uh, with regard to sports? Well, you know, I, I wouldn't categorize them as negative, but I totally understand uh, that, you know, students and parents who have worked all their life to, to get to a point where they want to participate in their, in their soccer or their football or their field hockey, whatever it happens to be, and to have that rug pulled out from under them, that's an emotional experience. And no to say that, you know, Abington Heights is not, is, is maybe not alone, but we are among a small number of, of school districts that are not participating and they see it going on in other areas, that, that's upsetting to them. I totally get it. Uh, I very much respect the fact that they feel strongly about it and they voice uh, you know, those strong feelings to me. And, and I do nothing but respect it. I, I told some that you know, if I were a senior in high school and this was my senior football season, I'd be out holding the sign too, uh, wanting, to, wanting to participate. So uh, again, I, I don't view those as negative, but very definitely people have expressed some very strong opinions about um, the issue of sports. Your spirits seem up. You seem like you're, you're keeping a really good attitude about it. I'm, go I'm, I'm good. I'm great. You know, I, I tell you, I, I'll tell you who has the hard job is our teachers and our parents and our students, right? I mean, I'm, I'm in an office. I could kind of manage one thing at a time, but, you know, they're out really hammering away. Uh, the teachers are, uh, you know, dealing with some new technology. Parents, you know, are, are home or they're, they're dealing with conflicts between their job and, and trying to take care of their kids. So uh, I, I'm really great. Uh, and it's just the worry I have for the challenges this is presenting to our parents, uh, to our students, to our teachers, and, and just to our broader community. As the saying goes, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Not really. No, I'm good. <laughs> I, I, thank you for saying it. And, and a lot of people say, hey, Mike, how you doing? And like, I'm doing great. It's just a matter right. of, you know, working real, putting a lot of hours as all school administrators are at this time, but we're doing it for good reasons and we're being inspired by, you know, our parents and our students and our teachers who are in plugging it, doing the, doing the thing where the rubber hits the road. And again, I'm, I'm very upbeat about what I've been seeing as far as what, what's happening in our schools and in our community. So we don't have a lot of time here, so let me kick it over to Nicole to get into some nitty gritty uh, in terms of how you're dealing with, uh, with coronavirus. Nicole? Okay. Sure. So, so Dr. Mann, you know, obviously, Abington has chosen to go virtual, at least for the first month or so of school. You know, we wanted to ask you how you got to that decision, how you were able to make that difficult decision. And now, I think you're two days in. We also want to see how it's going. All right. Well, first, it's a very hard decision. And it's, it's no one can come down and say, all right, this is the right move to make. You know, there's a lot of different views of it. And, and in, in, in looking at the, this, our, our school board, um, you know, looked at all the information, we provided them with a lot, and they, you know, researched on their own. And, and the view that we took was that we have to get our doors open, no doubt, right? But we also know that during the course of this year, it's very likely, or at least possible, that we'll have to shift from one mode of instruction to the other, depending upon how things go. Uh, and the idea is that we would begin with a virtual uh, beginning where all of our students are home, all of our classes are virtual. And then in a short period of time, you know, we would hopefully master uh, that, that approach, get all the equipment out, get through the bugs, and then get everyone back in the hybrid model on October 5th. And then this way, if some point during the year we had to go back to virtual, we would have had a good experience uh, getting a good solid start and then uh, you know, being able to transition seamlessly back to virtual, which we would hope not would happen, but we know that's you know, a very real possibility. And how has it gone? So you're two days in now, right? Right. right. How's we, it going? We are, we are two days in and you know, we have not been without our challenges. Uh, but uh, as I walk down the halls and we've asked our teachers and, and the vast majority of them are actually in their classrooms now, uh, delivering the instruction from their classrooms. And as you walk the halls, you hear student voices and you hear kids' voices. Uh, there's some amazing resources that our teachers are using. So 
it is so good for us to be back. And again, we're not back the way we want to be, but you know, those connections are being rebuilt and reestablished. Uh, good things are happening. And so I am, I am just really pleased that uh, with our, with our, with our start and I, I'm telling everybody that each day is going to be better than the day before. And, and the first few days were really good. And so we're going to have a very solid run leading up to October 5th, to get our kids back. And uh, again, I'm very, very hopeful with the start we've had over the last two days. Doctor, let me ask you, we're obviously, you know, we as lawyers, when we're approaching a problem, we have to look at precedent. Uh, we look at, at what are the laws, what are the regulations that guide a particular topic. So I wanted to ask you, what are, what are the source materials that you're using to, to sort of guide your decisions uh, in terms of opening, in terms of what approach to use? What, what are you relying on? You know, uh, back in March and April, we were looking for guidance, you know, what direction to take. Uh, right now, there is, has been a landslide of guidance that has come down our way. Uh, the CDC has put out some very valuable documents uh, as far as you know, general uh, safety practices for us. And, and the Pennsylvania Department of Education and the Pennsylvania Department of Health, especially as of late, have been putting out some very useful documents uh, that you know, guide our decision making regarding you know, what happens if we have some cases in the school, you know, at what point should we close down? At what point can we have everyone back all the time? So there's some, some very good, straightforward guidance that we've been getting from, you know, our partners in Harrisburg and at the CDC. So you don't, you're not twisting in the wind. You haven't had to sort of make this up as you go along. You're, you're getting the material that you need to make these decisions. Well, we, we are making it up as we go uh, because there's a lot of fine detail in taking the guidance and making it work. But, you know, in broad strokes, you know, we have a sense of, you know, what is social distancing? What is acceptable? What isn't? Um, when do we open the doors? When do we not? How do we clean? Uh, you know, how many kids can we have on a bus? All that kind of thing. So, you know, we, we are getting some, some very good guidance, but it, the, the challenge is uh, interpreting that guidance into, you know, a workable operational plan, which is, again, something that we're, we're doing every day. Let's, doctor, oh, I'm sorry, Mike, go ahead. So I, sports is, is, is obviously a, a big issue for, for folks. And, and we talked about that and the passion that people have. Um, as I understand it, the board, your, your board essentially left that decision to you, correct? No, no, quite the contrary. Um, the, we gathered as much information as we possibly could. And, and we did presentations to the board. The board asked questions, they gathered information. And, I, and on two occasions, now I certainly recommended and, and stand completely behind the cancellation of fall contact sports, but uh, the board uh, you know, was presented with that information. And on two occasions in public meetings in front of thousands of people uh, and Zoom, uh, affirmed 9-0 that uh, they were in support of this. So uh, you know, the thought that, that Mike Mahan did this uh, is really not, not the case. But, but Mike okay. is very supportive of, of where we are right now, albeit a terrible thing for, for our athletes and their families. How do you foresee this affecting you know, those students who may want to further their athletic careers in college, but you know, haven't yet you know, found a program where they wanna go and do that? How, if at all, are you helping you know, to get them the assistance or the support that they need so they can, they can do that? Well, it's, it is a lot. I mean, there's no question. Uh, and it would be disingenuous for me to say, oh, everybody will be fine. All right. Because that, that is just not reflective of the situation we're facing. Um, in fact, one of our board members in, in a public meeting said, you know, uh, I was able to play division one, double a football. Uh, and in large part, because I had a good senior year. And, and, you know, the idea that our, our students are not going to have that opportunity is, is terrible. Right? But when, when we look at the issue in its totality and the importance of maintaining safety and our, our, our true effort to be laser focused on opening our doors and keeping our doors open, uh, the prospect of con contact sports are just inconsistent with that, with that vision. And so you know, our coaches have developed over the years strong relationships with coaches at the collegiate level. Uh, those will continue. 
I'm aware that a number of our athletes are working out and doing some films and, and you know, things like that to keep themselves, you know, in the eyes of the college coaches. Uh, so we will work, our staff will work to do everything we possibly can to allow those opportunities to remain open. But no doubt, no fall sports, contact sports is a setback for everybody. Has there been any discussion beyond the fall? Or I guess it's just a wait and see approach. It, it is a wait and see approach. I mean, the, the governor, uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Ed and the Department of Health have put out you know, a blanket statement saying they strongly recommend against having any sports until January 1st. Um, in our case, we set kind of a standard uh, to say that we will allow any sport to continue uh, that can match the social distancing protocols that we would expect in our classrooms. And so we were able to um, sponsor or continue with uh, varsity uh, golf, varsity tennis, and with some modifications cross country. Because again, we could, we could you know, meet the social distancing standards there that we have in the classroom. But uh, as we look at you know, the winter approaching and basketball and winter sports, that really is not a conversation we've, we've been able to have or engage in. Uh, and, and hopefully, you know, uh, vaccines and things coming out that will, will make those things easier. But it's, it's an unexamined issue at this point. Short answer to your question. Let me bring Lars into the, into the discussion. Uh, Lars has been used as a resource for, for a number of different schools and municipalities because, again, there's no playbook that we have that we can go to to, to navigate this. So, so, Lars, what are some of the issues that you've been seeing that some of our clients uh, have been coming to you with? And, and we'll see if if Dr. Mahan has, has been having some of those similar issues and how he's been handling them. But as Dr. Mahan said, the, the state in the beginning was a little slow at getting guidance out, but has gotten out some very good guidance recently. Um, but when you look at a lot of that guidance, it has to do with uh, there's no one size fits all approach. So everyone has to adjust it uh, to how it's going to work for them. And that leads to a lot of questions. Um, you know, the six feet social distancing is a spacing issue. And so for school districts, you know, how does that fit with their classroom? And when they were doing, you know, 20 some students now, you know, they can't fit that many kids in that same size classroom. So you're used seeing that in the schools, you're seeing that also in workspaces where offices had cubicles and the removal of cubicles to be able to have the safe business practices that the governor put out uh, or the guidance that, or the order put out by the governor back in, in June. So spacing becomes a big issue and then technology and the access to internet also is, is issues that everybody's dealing with, right? Not everyone has internet at home. While for many of us, it is second nature and something that we just think everybody has, but not everyone has uh, decided to have that cost in their lives. Yeah, Dr. Main, have you dealt with that issue? You have, you have kids, I'm sure, that don't have access to, to the technology. Is, is that an issue for you? We very definitely has been. Uh, we have um, we've ordered you know, huge numbers of Chromebooks uh, from back in March. Uh, and, and unfortunately, because of some supply chain issues, uh, Chromebooks are, are not flowing to school districts. We were hoping to have another, you know, seven or 800 of them in, uh, you know, by the start of school. We're still waiting on that order. And so right now at Abington Heights, we have uh, a Chromebook in the household of, of every student, as I understand it, but we're not able to get Chromebooks into households where there are siblings. And as soon as our, the order comes in, we'll have enough, but it is really hard for um, you know, a, a parent and a household to have one computer and two kids in different grade levels and expect that to, to work. And so, uh, you know, and hopefully that'll be resolved in the near future once the, the orders come in. And with respect to internet um, access, uh, we have been able to purchase some hotspots. Uh, we've helped people out. I will say Comcast has been really good about uh, getting, uh, you know, low cost or free internet uh, to to students and families who need it. But in our school district, uh, there are some regions that no matter what you do, you cannot get internet. Sure. Uh, it, it's just, it's a rural area. There's some mountain terrain. And, uh, and so we've been reaching out to those families with, uh, you know, uh, printed handouts and, and you know, computer, 
com uh, computer sticks to put in, or memory sticks to put in the machines. And but that's a real issue, and it does speak to, you know, the inequalities that come when we're dealing with uh, virtual instruction. And you know, we really do need to get our kids back under our roof, uh, where really we do our best work. How are you handling, you know, I have a daughter, she's nearly two, and I can't imagine her having the attention span to sit on Zoom. I know right. she's a little younger than school age, but what about the young kids, pre-K, kindergarten, how are they handling this, this, uh, this virtual plan? You, you know, I, I was visiting uh, Waverly Elementary School, one of our schools, and I went to our kindergarten teacher, and I asked her that exact question, right? Because how do you do, I don't know how they do it when the kids are in the classroom with you know, little six-year-olds running around doing the things. And, and, and she just said with great, we're going to do it, right? We're going to learn to sit. We're going to learn to hit the space bar. We're going to learn to log in. We're going to wave to each other. We're going to read stories. And, and so you know, the, we have to rely on the extraordinary talented professionals we have you know, uh, who, who teach kindergarten. And, and, and that's just an you know, amazing thing in and of itself. Uh, but the, the point is one that, um, you know, kids in kindergarten need their parents to be there to help, right? There's no six-year-old who's going to be able to independently navigate, you know, getting onto Google Meet or whatever the, the case is with their computers. And so um, that hurts with respect to their jobs and childcare. There's all kinds of issues that our, our community is struggling with. And, um, you know, that's why we need to get, we need to get our kids back. Doctor, do you do social media at all? Uh, we do. Uh, you, you personally? Uh, I, I use social media in my role at, um, as a superintendent, but you will, you'll be hard pressed to find me on Facebook. The reason I ask you that question is just to kind of see what, have you been getting feedback? And I mean, that's where everybody goes, right? That's like the, t the town square now yeah. is, is Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. That's where people go to express their opinions. Are, are you kind of getting the pulse? of the district from, from that forum or, or how's that work for you? You know, I have, um, I have a very good contact who's 17 years old who lives under my roof. And uh, she is very quick uh, to monitor social media and even quicker to tell me when I'm trending down. Uh, so we do, have, we do have some connection to social media. Uh, our administrators are out you know, talking to people and they get the pulse of the place. So while I'm not really on directly, um, we kind of get a, a sense of of what's, what's bubbling. And I will tell you that while people are genuinely concerned about this, this issue or that, my sense is that people are happy with their schools and are, are pleased with their teachers and are supportive of what's trying to go on. And it really is a community that has always in my time here been very supportive of uh, education, which is not to say we don't have our struggles and our challenges, but we live, we're blessed to be in a great community that, that supports our schools. Lars, anything we missed? We don't want to take up too much more of the doctor's time. It's the middle of the school day. So anything we missed, do you think? i uh, just just wondering, with the virtual met, uh, you know, uh, method that you're using, is there a resource or, or resources for parents to help with the at-home uh, part that they're playing? I mean, as you know, you know a six-year-old can't be left alone and, and can't navigate, as you said, on their own. So you know, what's there for the parents to help with that process or for the parents to uh, uh, help with the teacher process. Right, and there's, I mean, we, we have really tried to limit our approach to something called uh, the Google Suite, where uh, Google has a lot of applications for education with respect to um, meetings and documents and all kinds of online resources. And by, by doing that, we don't have a number of different platforms for, so a kid in third grade won't have a different platform than you know, his older brother or sister in, in ninth grade. So we've tried to be consistent in the digital platforms that we're using. We have put out resources. And one of the things we've asked our teachers to do, and they've been great about it, is that even though we are teaching live lessons all day, uh, those lessons are recorded. And then within this, their Google Classroom are available to access on demand. So if, if a parent is having a hard time or needs to be away uh, from you know a third grade math lesson, uh, later on that night, they'll be able to sit down and access that math lesson, albeit not live, uh, but they'll have access to it to kind of work through it at a time that 
might be more convenient for the family. Good stuff. I know, we, I know we are wrapping up soon, but I do want to ask one question. Um, I very much look for, looked forward to when I was in school, homecoming, homecoming dances and so forth. What do you foresee for events like that this fall? Well, alternatives in play. Right. Let me, let me answer a different question than you asked and I'll get back to it. Uh, not to dodge. Right. But, you know, we, while we have not had sports, we have all kinds of extracurricular activities that are going on right now, like our yearbook, uh, our Pennsylvania Junior Academy of Science, uh, our, all of our clubs are, are engaged and, and that's happening right now. So we're trying to make it as normal as possible. The mock trial team? Uh, mock trial, yeah. I, I think they're, they're going, are you an advisor, Lars? Uh, not for Abington, but I, I've sat and judged. I've, I've seen Abington and Scranton prep have their, uh, their battles up in the uh, courthouses in Scranton. Right. Who was that other school? I can't, never mind. All right. But anyway. Uh, you have your foot in both of those pools. I had been, yes. I'm clearly at Abington Heights right now. I've reformed from, from 1000 Wyoming Avenue. But anyway, um, as far as dances are concerned, you know, we want to get them back. Now, it's very hard to envision right now a prom, you know, which is a mass of dancers around, you know, around the band or around the speakers. So, um, but but we, we will work to provide the very best uh, opportunities for kids that we can. I mean, with graduation last year, our seniors didn't have their formal graduation, but we had a virtual graduation at the drive-in. We were able to get a socially distanced graduation at uh, um, PNC Park. And so our kids are creative, our administrators are creative, and even if we're not able to do what was always traditionally the prom, the dance, we're going to work together and really hard to get the best possible opportunities out, out for our kids. Doctor, we learned a lot about how uh, your school district is, is navigating these times, but when we think about this podcast and who might be listening to it, I, I imagine a lot of people from Abington are going to be tuning in. I hope they will tune in. And as a way to kind of close this out, let's have a little fun and, and maybe learn a little bit about you. So let me ask you a couple of quick questions. All right. Okay. How do you spend your, like your I want to get some sense for your hobbies. How do you spend a Saturday? What's um, your Saturday? Well, you know what? I, I, I still pretend that I, that I'm a runner. So I'll, I'll get up usually every Saturday morning and I have a running partner. We will run five or six miles. And then, you know, really I, I spend, I value the time with my family. Uh, my daughter is 17 years old and, you know, her days under our roof and willing to hang out with her, with her dad, I know are limited. So, you know, we'll, we'll hike, we'll, um, you know, spend some time just around the house. Um, so, you know, my, my, my interests now are, I used to golf, I used to be big into the sports and, and right now I'm, I'm very big into, you know, just kind of hanging out with my family when I can. One of the other big effects for coronavirus is on restaurants, right? Our right. restaurants are also struggling with this. Let's let's ask you, what's your favorite restaurant in Nipah? My favorite restaurant in Nipah. You know, I I very much enjoy um, heading over to Caramias in Dunmore for a sandwich and pasta fazool. Okay. Uh, I um, you know for for going out, you know, kind of a fancy place. Uh, which, you know, maybe we'll, we'll stop at maybe Regnachi sometime in Dunmore. Uh, we've been going, heading downtown in Scranton. And we have some great uh, restaurants here in Clark Summit. Um, State Street. You know, we'll go down to State Street Grill. They do some great things there. Yeah, I've um, been there. It's a good place. Beta Bread here on Main Street. It's great sandwiches, homemade bread. So, you know, and, and I, ultimately my favorite restaurant is wherever I'm taken. And so I'm not, uh, you know, too picky on that. Well, good stuff, doctor. We don't want to take up too much of your time on a, on a Friday afternoon here. So we thank you for joining us and we had a lot of fun talking to you. Um, maybe we can have you back sometime once we're back in, in normal, normal operations. And I'm going to start thinking about who I'm taking to dinner from history because that was a, you answered all the coronavirus questions like nothing. That was a, that was like the hardest I question of the day. I whiffed on that one. So we'll have to think about that. So listen, right. I very much appreciate the opportunity and I hope you all take care and thank you for the opportunity to visit me today. Very good. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We want to thank everyone for tuning in and especially a thank you to Dr. Mike Mayen for being our first guest and having a very interesting discussion. And we'd also like to take a moment to remind you that we have an email here for our podcast. It's appearing on the screen. It's firmthinking at hkqlaw.com. 
We'd really like to hear from you, see what you think about our discussion today. Was there anything that you'd like to hear about that we didn't talk about? We'd also like to hear your ideas on future guests, and maybe you want to appear. If so, give us a shout, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll give you our feedback on the next podcast. See you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.